the mm -hmm. way things are supposed to be in Jay. Yeah. Each and each and each other is the same thing. We've been trying to work this out for, for a while and, and we did it, right? It took twenty one years. <laughs> Very happy, happy to be here with these with these beautiful gentlemen. He, this man here, Chuck Lamb, has a reputation in, in New York City for being, besides being a wonderful player, of being a serious mensch. And I'm sure that <laughs> their reputations carried over to Saratoga. <laughs> and on the base, um, and we've known each other for a, for a, a long time. And there's been there's a, lots of water under the bridge. And, and hair gone <laughs> along, the, <laughs> along the way. I used to have a ponytail, and he had a big fro, you know? <laughs> you should have heard these guys talking about Jay. Like, Remember that Dexter Gordon game you did? Oh, we're trying to age gracefully. <laughs> so be kind. And, um, but uh, this is what we like to do. We like to get together um, in, the, in the midst of all the, other, all the other projects we do and just friends getting together and choosing a repertoire of music that we thought you might like, really, really, uh, really intimate and really relaxed. Um, this instrument here, I, I know this is a knowledgeable audience. You would be amazed at how many people, when I say I play the vibraphone, give me a vacant stare back. <laughs> Just very briefly, the reason I play the vibraphone, people al always ask me that, is because my mother was a sadist. <laughs> and she wanted me to play the glockenspiel in the marching band. <laughs> oh, we're gonna play. Okay, we're gonna play, and I'm gonna stop talking. But I just have to. I have to get. I'm in therapy over this still. <laughs> in the hierarchy of cool in high school, there's a hierarchy. It might start with the jocks, like the star athletes, and then it might go down to the you know the kids that have have the rich parents and the great cars, and then the really attractive you know just good looking. You know, folks, and then there, there are the smart kids, and then there's, and it goes down and down and down, and then you have the nerds <laughs> at the bottom, Rocket Club, and you know, sorry to any of you who are in Rocket Club, <laughs> and then under the nerds you have the glockenspiel player in the marching band. <laughs> the nerds would wait for, the, uh, for him after school to beat his ass and take his lunch money, okay? So, I'm dealing, I'm still dealing with it. Um, and music, and music helps, so this is part of my therapy. We're going to start with a beautiful piece composed by Chuck Lamb, and I, I believe this was written for, oh, for Dave Rubeck, yeah? And this is called Raggedy Waltz for Dave.
sound good out there? Does the sound sound as good? That was a witchcraft when we were playing that before the set. I think Joel Moss said, "Oh, you're going to play a Halloween set." That was the only that was the only Halloween tune unfortunately. So, those of you who came for the Halloween music can can go now. <laughs> we're going to play the, the actually this is the only original song of mine that that I brought uh, for the for the evening, but it's a. I, I thought it would be a. Uh, I thought it would be nice to play tonight with these gr- with these great guys. Um, uh, they say that um, that people who are disposed to m- moods of melancholy are at such times under the influence of the planet, you know, the planet Saturn. You know, and I think uh, I've been uh, I've been uh, uh, under the influence of that planet many times in my life. I think as a musician, I, s- I think s- s- sometimes the, the dark places inform, inform our, our music, like the best part of our music, or th- the, I think for any artist, sometimes come for the, from, the, from the darker regions um, that the most beauty comes oftentimes. But um, uh, when I wrote the song, I was definitely uh, in one of those moods, and uh, I call this Saturn's Child. something first.
Yeah, that's Joe Locke. Amazing. And that first piece, Mr. Locke? The first? With the Irish, or what oh, was it? The first it? piece, you, you know, I, I actually have a, have a story about that. I'm Here, let me oh, give you the instrument. I'll tell you the story. <laughs> how many, how many is, is it cool if I tell this little story about that? That, the, the, that first little piece I played, the reason I was thinking of it. How many of you jazz fans here know a trumpet player named Dr. Eddie Henderson? You guys know Eddie? Hey, Rudy Lou, how's it going, man? So I used to play in Eddie's band, and about 15 years ago, we were at Fantasy Studios in Berkeley, California, you know, where Creedence Clearwater used to do all their records and all those great albums that, that were made at Fantasy. And we were tracking and doing some edits on, a, on an Eddie Henderson record. And the second day of the sessions, I walked into Fantasy Studios, um, and th this young woman was sitting at the piano playing Rachmaninoff beautifully. I was like, who, who, am I in the wrong studio? Who, who's this? And then in walks Eddie and says, oh, Joe, have you met my daughter? <laughs> and she was 18 years old at the time, and they, they hadn't seen each other for a long time. They had a, compli had a complicated relationship. And, and, uh, but I met Eddie's daughter that day, and we were actually tracking that song. It's called The Water is Wide, and it's, a, it's, an, English, it's an English air. And th oh, the plan was for Eddie and and myself to do it as a duet. I, I put, the, I put the, the, the marimba, a couple tracks of marimba, and vibes like a, like a, like a carpet under Eddie, and then he was gonna play it on muted trumpet. And his daughter said, oh, Dad, I know that song. <laughs> and she ended up singing it on the record in this absolutely, absolutely beautiful, beautiful voice. And last week, someone sent me, fast forward 15 years, her name is Kava Menzies. And I received this, a video in the mail, I mean, uh, on Facebook. Uh, it came from Facebook in a private message. And it's her new release. And she has the single from it is called I'm a Woman. And man, I'm getting choked up even thinking about this song. It's so beautiful. Kava Menzies, her name is M E N Z Z I E S. And it's this beautiful, you know, pan to women. And the video, the accompanying video is absolutely, absolutely. <sighs> Incredible, and uh, and it was amazing too. And then I connected with her. I hadn't seen her since that day, and that was the song she sang with Eddie. So it was just on my mind today. So I thought I'd play it for you. But uh, the song's called "I Am Woman," and ch check that video out. It's fantastic. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, yeah, what, he, what he said. That's, that's that's a great story. That's a beautiful piece. I, I love that the composition. Man. There's not a lot of four-handed dudes playing. Vibes. Uh, uh, am I am I right about yeah. that? I mean, I mean, c you know, consistently yeah. holding the the four. And I, the I, I only hold four because if if I put two down, I'm I'm, I'm hopelessly lost. My balance is, is off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not a it's not a good. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> no, it's an amazing <laughs> thing. It's like the training wheels. It's like the training wheels. I'm gonna have to try that on the see if I can do a four mallet thing. And Ira Coleman on the bass. Yeah. I, just, I really want to thank you guys for coming out this, this past year. I mean, it's just been incredible. What, what an incredible ride, and um, it wouldn't have happened without you guys. So. You know, the, uh, the McCormicks and, uh, and, and, of course, Rhea, you know, and Teddy, and all you people just that... that, that um, you know, you guys that come out week after, you know, every every month. I really appreciate it, and um, it, it's it's pretty friggin' cool. So thank you guys. <laughs> We're gonna do a a Cole Porter tune for you right now. Uh, everything I love.
Thanks very much, you guys. Joe Locke, Ira Coleman, Chuck Lamb, thank you. We're going to take a little rest. We'll see you guys in a bit. Thank you so much. I was talking to Ira Coleman back, backstage. He was reminding me of our, our style, our style a accidents from the 80s. We, I used to think I was fly, man. I thought I was fly, man. With the like, you, you, you should. I mean, it was some of the photos you just wish didn't, wish didn't exist, you know. I was getting my jacket backstage, and I, I, I looked at. The, there's a mirror back in the green room, and, and I saw my glasses. You have the glasses hanging there too. I was doing a gig a, a few years ago, um, someplace. I only start, started to wear glasses a few years ago. All downhill from here, folks. And. Someone who knew me from back in the day, because I was quite, I was quite a, I used to like to dress, like really like to dress. And he hadn't seen me in a long time, and he was in the back of the theater. And he went, oh, Joe, yeah, he's still, he's still got that style. Look, he's wearing that, he's got that like African something around his neck, that beautiful African. And, and then after the set, he came up to me and he said, oh, I he was going to compliment me on my jewelry. And he went, oh, those are glasses. You're just, you're just old. <laughs> That's nice. I used to have, I used to have a mullet. Yep. Wow. Not, not that long ago. I want. I, I. I would pay to see those yeah. photos, man. Ruth. Ruth. Yeah, uh, we could hang afterwards, man. We could exchange photos. Party in the back. This is party in the back. <laughs> this song we're gonna play. Um, I had the had the r r real privilege. Uh, I'm sorry, privilege of touring for two years um, with Milt Jackson's rhythm section, Bob Cranshaw, Mickey Roker, and Mike Ladon, playing the music of Milt Jackson. Um, I remember one of the, you know, we played Europe a few times in the States, and I remember playing at the Detroit Jazz Festival with the band, playing all of Milt's music with Milt's band, and I remember walking out on stage at this big house of people, and the Jackson family, the brothers and sisters, and, uh, and, and Milt's wife, they were all sitting in the front row like this. <laughs> Talk about pressure, man. But it was... Tell me, you played with Mill too, didn't you? Okay, talk about yourself, guys. We're going to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Aretha Franklin's birthday. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Because he used to go to a private Yes, yes, yeah. Wow. Came up in the church. But we'd like to play a song that's very closely associated with Milt Jackson. It's probably the, the most famous of the modern jazz quartet songs. And uh, we thought we'd play it f for you this evening. This is called Django by John Lewis.
glasses come out. <laughs> Ira? Ira's cool. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do uh, a, a piece of mine, and um, we, we did this at, at Soundcheck, t taking a look at it, and um, Joe just just played the shit out of it. <laughs> 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 he really did. It's, just, it's, so, it's so beautiful what, uh, what this dude does, including this dude over here, too. I'm, I'm like, I got the best seat in the house. I hear these... <laughs> Go. Back at you, man. So, right on, dude. So, um, this is a piece of mine. Uh, this is called Dorothy's Song.
Joe Locke. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. That's, uh, we're we're going to wrap this up with um, a, a tune that, that Joe brought to the equation here. And this is a tune called No Mo. Thank you on behalf of Chuck Lamb. Chuck Lamb. Yeah. Mr. Ira Coleman at the base. This is also kind of a modern jazz quartet reference because this is um, this is from an album that uh, it made uh, that was done in 1953 called Sonny Rollins meets the modern jazz quartet. So it's uh, so this is this is a really cool tune and um, from Sonny and and Milt uh, playing together. And um, thank you guys for being an absolutely beautiful audience. I just want to say that every place we go. It's a top. It's a top-down thing. The person who creates something puts his his vibe into into the into the whole thing. You know, whether it's a jazz festival, a club, um, a series, and the people at the top of this did something very beautiful because this is a wonderful thing that's been built here, and we're very happy and honored to be a part of it. So give yourselves a round of applause, please. No mo.
Thank you very much, guys. Eric Coleman. Whew. Joe Locke on the vibes. My name is Chuck Lamb. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. We'll see you next month.